Our next topic revolves around energy of objects near gravitational bodies. Um, we can talk about it first in terms of an orbiting object. So let's talk about like a satellite orbiting the Earth. If we consider the Earth here, most satellites are in low Earth orbit, which is really not that far off the surface. It's only about 20% of the radius of the Earth. So here it is, and it's in orbit. And the thing is, we know it's moving. So we know it absolutely has kinetic energy. And kinetic energy just is... one-half mv squared, where m is the mass of the orbiting satellite. <clears throat> but we know if it has total mechanical energy, one of the things we know about total mechanical energy, E total, it has been in the past and is continuing to be kinetic energy plus potential energy. So in this case there's no springs or anything, so this must be gravitational potential energy. The problem is it's different because once you get off the planet it's no longer constant. When we were near the surface of the Earth, for example, when you're near the surface of the Earth, and you're here, and you're just chilling, you know that if you take your ball and you throw it to here, to a height of h, the ball has mass m, there's two things we know. We know that the force on the ball is equal to mg, that's the Earth pulling it down, and the gravitational potential energy, energy of the ball is equal to mgh, where h is the height above the ground. Now you can see there's a relationship here that I find actually a little bit interesting, where if we compare these two, it looks like your gravitational potential energy is equal to your force times the distance, which is actually pretty true. There's a hidden negative sign here because this force is in the down direction. So here we know that this is down because this um, vector here is negative. So the force here is down, but the height is up. So there's actually an inherent negative sign here, which is going to um, it's going to show up here in a moment. Normally we just calculate these values. The value is whatever it is down, and this value is whatever it is up. Um, this is the dot product because both of these are vectors, but this is a scalar. That's going to be important also. So we know that there's an inherent negative sign here because of the force value. This is okay for us because we know that the work is actually equal to the force dot the distance. So the work done is opposite the energy stored. Because in order to get positive work, these two vectors have to be in the same direction, but these two vectors are in opposite directions, so this is a negative. How does that manifest up here? Well, if I want to go to calculate my gravitational potential energy here, what is the gravitational force vector? The gravitational force vector is big G times the mass of, in this case, it's the mass of the Earth, times the mass of the satellite divided by r squared, where r is its distance from the center. It's orbital distance. If I'm going to use this same idea here, that the gravitational potential energy is the force times the distance, basically what I'm going to do is to get my gravitational potential energy. I'm going to take my gravitational force formula, mass of the Earth times the mass of the satellite divided by r squared, and I'm going to multiply by the distance. But what distance is this this time? It's actually the radius vector. And, again, there's a hidden negative sign, which we're going to need here, 
because it turns out that the equation for gravitational potential energy when you are around a planetary body is equal to negative g m, in this case Earth, and satellite m, divided by the radius. And it's no longer squared because we had to multiply there. And this is a very important idea. So this allows us to find the gravitational potential energy. So I know how to calculate the kinetic energy, I know how to calculate the um, gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy. And so if you needed to calculate the total energy like this, you would be K plus. So this is one half M. Now what M is that this time? It's the mass of the satellite times V squared. Now it's plus this term, but do not forget that this one is minus. So this is a term. Now you can't really add these two terms together because this is an MF, this is the mass of satellite, this is the mass of satellite. You might be able to do a little bit of math magic here, but without having a specific problem to work, this is the way to calculate the total mechanical energy in the system, which it often it asks for. Now, where does this negative, where do the negative come into play? Because the negative ends up, it's going to be an important idea here. But before we leave, let's highlight this because we're going to need it here in a moment. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to take a specific case for this. Because the gravitational force is attractive, means it pulls two things together. I'm going to take my Earth and I'm going to put it way over here. Here's my Earth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ball. Okay? I'm going to take my ball and I'm going to move it way over here. So I'm going to pull it all the way out so my ball is all the way out here at a distance of infinity, and I'm going to let it go from rest. Therefore, I'm going to let it go with velocity is equal to zero. Now, this is an interesting construct because, well, what does that mean? What is the total mechanical energy in the system? If I let this go for rest, even though this is way over here, the gravitational force is infinite, this is going to start moving this direction, picking up speed as it goes. But how are we going to figure out the total mechanical energy of the system? Well, the total mechanical energy of the system, E total, is equal to the K plus the UG. So if I look at this a little closer, this is 1 half M, that's the ball, V squared, plus, oh, it's minus, we'll put the negative here, negative G, mass of the Earth, mass of the ball, all divided by the radius squared. Now, this one's not in orbit, but in this case, the radius is again the measurement from the center to the ball. So it's okay. It's actually going to be important here because if my ball is released from rest, if the v is equal to zero, what does that tell you about this term? The value is zero. Here's my minus sign gmm over r squared. But what is my r value here? My r value is approaching infinity. And if you approach infinity, if you start dividing by bigger and bigger numbers, what happens is this. This term also goes to zero. So for an object that is taken all the way out to infinity and released from rest, the total mechanical energy for that system is zero, which is weird, right? It is weird. Now, who cares? Well, I don't know. But we're going to use symmetry principle on this one. So if you take it out here and you release it from rest, what happens here is it speeds up all the way, and when it hits the surface, it's probably going pretty fast when it hits the surface. So when it hits, the speed is probably pretty big. But let's reverse the whole system. Let's say instead of taking it out here and letting it go from rest and it's speeding up, what if you 
started at the surface and you launched it so that it was speeding up all the way out here, what would happen there? Well, we end up with the same system here because as it's launched, the E total is equal to the kinetic energy plus the gravitational potential energy. But if it ends up out here at a distance of infinity with zero velocity, that means that the total mechanical energy of the system is equal to zero. So if I plug this zero into here, because the symmetry principle, I end up with zero is equal to one half mv squared minus g, mass of the earth, mass of the ball, divided by r squared. And in this case, this r is our starting r. It's the radius of the planet. So if I add this to both sides, I end up with g, mass of the earth, times the mass of the ball, divided by the radius of the Earth. Oh, that was a typo. Sorry, it's just R. Is equal to one half mass of the ball v squared. This is the mass of the ball, this is the mass of the ball. They magically disappear, and we end up with an interesting phrasing here. We end up with this idea that, I'm gonna bring it up here, Two g times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth is equal to v squared. This is the v two g mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth. This is the v that it would take that you wanted to launch off the surface so that the Earth couldn't really pull you back in because you're continually slowing down all the way until you get to infinity. Basically, this is the minimum speed it would take you to escape. Now, you can't ever escape the gravity, but you could escape the planet. So we call this the escape velocity. And this is generic for any planet. This is generic for any planet. If you want to launch off of any planet, your escape velocity is equal to the square root of 2 g universal gravitational constant, mass of whatever planet you're trying to launch off of, and the radius of that planet. And that is your escape velocity. And this is actually really easy to calculate. Um, this doesn't take into account the fact that most planets are spinning. This is just a, what if you wanted to launch radially right off the planet? Um, but it's a great exercise, and it looks a lot like some other equations with some g's and the mass of the planets and the radius of the planet. So this is one you definitely are going to want to know how to calculate if you don't want to learn how to memorize it.